about you? I'm Hank. Welcome to Hamiltonville Farm. Today, me and Brandle are going to... Is, is it me and Brandle or Brandle and I? Well, I'm going to cut down an oak tree. Brandle and I are going to cut down an oak tree. <laughs> I'm getting English lessons. That's I'm right. getting grammar lessons hey, on the Hamiltonville Farm. I'm, I'm useful for lots of things. He's, right? he's got so much knowledge, it's crazy, <laughs> right? So anyway, today we're going to try... We're going to attempt to cut down the largest oak tree that we've ever attempted before. We're going to tell you about the equipment we're using. We're going to tell you the process that we're thinking about. Now, neither one of us are lumberjacks, and neither one of us do this for a living, or we're not professionals. So, uh, you know, in your comments below, you know, we understand we're not professionals. We get it. That's the Captain Obvious statement. You're just going to try to not die today. I'm gonna try, yeah. We're going to try not to die. Yeah. All right? two, or two break old. stuff. Tree on the ground. Yeah. Walk away. Yeah. That's exactly right. So. And don't take out my chickens. And don't take out chickens. So let's talk to you about the process. Let's talk about what you're thinking. And then in the comments below, you can tell us, you know, hey, you should have thought about this. I mean, obviously it's going to be too late because we've already going to have the tree cut down. But maybe for the next time the you'll next. help us you'll help us learn something and that's always what we're trying to do okay so you guys stick around the masterminds trying to figure out how the heck to get this big tree down I hate to cut it down but it is rotten or beginning to rot it has like fungus all in it we're talking about the probability of which way the tree is going to fall, right? Because we want to be as safe as possible. But so the things we have to consider is we have a power line that runs off to my left, your right, and then behind us we have a pole barn. And so you'll see that we have, we also have two little girls that poke their heads out. On the, uh, uh, and we're keeping them at a safe distance. But um, so that's really our two main obstacles, right? We've got a power line and a uh, pole barn. We don't think the tree is big enough or long enough, tall enough uh, to hit that, but we're going to make the face cut. Brandel and I have been talking about this. We're going to make the face cut on the other side of what you see here and try to drop it in that little field area. I think that's going to be the safest way. And I think looking at the weight of the tree and how the weight is distributed on the limbs, I think that's the way to go. Anyway, that's the plan, right, Brandel? That's the plan. <laughs> Best laid plans of mice and men. Huh? Yeah. So let's talk about the equipment we're going to use. Today, I've obviously got my safety equipment on. Now, I got these chaps, right? These are uh, professional cutters. I can't remember the brand. I got them at Rural King, whatever it is. I don't. The thing I don't like about them is they don't wrap all the way around the back of your calf. You know, they only provide the front protection. I mean, no, some protection is better than no protection, but uh, if I had to do it all over again, I would have got the pair either a the pair that's made into the jeans itself or a pair that wraps around your whole you know back of your calf 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 uh, <laughs> yeah yeah what's the latin term i, I speak in latin a lot right? yeah um, pig, pig latin yeah and then of course i've got the ms291 we are going to use the branson with the titan titan pallet forks and the titan Ooh. safety cage to uh get us lifted up the ms291 is what i'm going to be using to carry that with my saw haul and then brandle has brought over a couple things as well. Yep, so we've got the uh, Echo CS620P with a 20 inch bar here that we're gonna use for limbing and stuff like that. And then to make our face cuts, we've got the steel MS661 with the 36 inch bar. So we think, if I can get the sheath off, we think that this will make pretty quick work yeah. of the trunks. We've also got a pole saw, an Echo pole saw, that is the attachment system, kind of like the steel combi system that reaches, I think it's maybe a 10 foot reach. So that combined with the, uh, with the pallet fork basket, I think it'll make pretty good work of the delimbing process. Yeah, so we'll get up there and try to get it as much as, as much as we can, get as much of it off the tree first before we actually take the tree down. Again, we think this is a logical process uh, as we talk about it. So if we get up here and discover something else isn't quite work uh, working or is quite safe as we'd like it to be, then we will uh, readjust our plan. Okay, I think what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna bring the tractor in from my right, your left, and come down here because our property actually slopes this way. So the gravity and the weight and everything seems the, the logical thing to happen as we cut these limbs off is it for it to fall this way. So we're gonna approach it this way so the tractor is on the, the the safe side not the hospital side not the hospital mm -hmm. side and then we're just going to try to work our way around the tree just uh, counterclockwise here and see if that works
So they've got it limbed pretty good, but now they're just discussing the weight distribution so they can make a plan to drop it. There's still a pretty big limb that's jutting off to the right there, and they don't want to hit that power line right there behind the neighbor's house. So they're trying to figure out what to do. That is a big trunk. See the ones that we tried to cut? To the right of it. Be careful, baby. That it's got a halfway cut limb. I didn't see it. See, I feel like if oh, we just yeah. bring pole saws up here, right okay. up there. there's only that much cut through that. That's right. that one. That's and the wind's blowing this way. Six inches by probably. But I don't know if he that. actually showed yeah. you how yeah, big. Drop that. This trunk oh, is. I mean, seriously, take. here's my hand. Look at the size of this thing. But I'd rather attack it it's huge. Hey, we lost it. now. Swap it out from the pole saw. See, this is where the vo this is where inexperience comes in. So I thought, well, I could cut it, you know, cut it here, and then I could make a like a wedge cut on it, back cut it basically. Well, the bar, the length of the bar is not long enough to cut through the limb. So I'm trying. So I thought, well, I tried to cut it from the other side. So I think what we're going to it's, it's cut enough. So I think what we're going to do is just throw a chain on it and get rid of uh, that particular limb right quick. That's the quickest, easiest way to do it and then uh, try to start getting some of these other limbs taken off. But again, you can, this is where inexperience comes in. I just don't know how to handle this where I think, you know, if I try to think about it logical, I think I can back cut it. Well, I'm not, you know, what you think you could do and how you execute your plans to different things sometimes. So, uh, you know, we're just trying to stay safe. And uh, so I think what we're gonna do is just rip it down with the chain and 
go from there and see what other limbs because we're almost ready to cut the tree down so you know we're talking about how we can't we really can't execute what we're thinking and that's uh, kind of aggravating so what we're going to do is just and that's that's as high as i could go with the the uh titan safety cage I, I was at the upper limits of the tractor at this point so that's as high as i could get so I couldn't get no higher and i definitely didn't want to get any closer because i wanted to maintain that safe distance for uh in case you know when the limb fell so I think we're going to reassess this particular limb, try to pull it off with a strap or a chain, and then, or we could attack it from this way and just finish up the cut. Maybe that's what we'll do is come around from this side. But the fact, we don't like how the, let me see if I can get it. We don't like how it's leaning toward, like if we get on this side to cut it, if we get on this side to cut it, I don't like how it's leaning that way, and I don't want it to fall back on me. And so that's really kind of our biggest concern at that point. And you can see, I mean, we're almost through it. Probably what four inches, wouldn't you say, Brandon? Yeah, I think so. Think so. Well, maybe if we come from more, maybe if we come this way. Yeah, we, if you come from here. I think, yeah, maybe we'll try it that way. Yeah. All right, let's try that. Okay, so this is the side we're going to attack it from in hopes it don't fall on us. We don't have very much to cut. Alright, now we're in a pickle. What do you do now? Huh? Alright, so this is happening. The little uh, pole saw got wedged, so they tied a rope to the handle to the pole saw. So when the limb falls and it comes out, it'll just kind of swing down and hit those lower limbs of the tree and hopefully not break it. Now they're going to put a toe strap onto the limb to try to pull it the rest of the way down so yikes okay one small crisis averted he was able to get the um, saw from being wedged into the tree now he's going to try to continue to cut the limb and hopefully it will fall right where they want it saw got wedged again so they're trying to get it out a lot of pressure from that limb so back to plan a gonna get the toe strap try to pull it with the truck since the saw is wedged again okay the saw is still wedged so they're trying to throw a strap over it chain came off of it that was crazy now we got all the limbs we want off we're going to take the tree down now it's still really 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 tall just less of it and man is it windy today that was a huge limb that just fell it's like a small tree in itself uh -huh. isn't it Thank you, Jesus, for keeping us safe. Yes, I was praying. Good. That made me nervous. <laughs> sure hey, if you like these kind of videos, just go ahead and take a quick second to hit the like button. Also hit that subscribe button. We, we crank up old equipment. We cut down trees. We work on tractors. We do all kind of fun stuff here at Hamiltonville Farm. So if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We'd appreciate it. We're just regular folks. We, you know, we're not professionals at anything, but we <laughs> hope you enjoy our content, right? So now we're going to go, we're going to make this face cut and we're going to, we're going to try to angle it so that the, 
tree falls, you can see my arm there. We'll make the face cut so that it that it falls that way, but the wind is blowing this way. So if it twists or something, we've got a lot of we've got a lot of uh, we've got a big margin of error, is what I'm saying. So I think we're just going to try to land it in that field right there. Nothing around us. I think we'll be safe there. All the weights on that side, so we should be good to go. So have you actually measured that trunk? Like I wonder how big it is. Yeah. If you have a big saw. Yeah, we got the big saw. Uh, we're about to find out. <laughs> the more me and Brandel talk about the cuts we're going to use, we think the best option is what they call the Humboldt uh, cut, where essentially you're going to make your flat cut on top and then you cut underneath it, you cut the face of it or the wedge of it back up into it. So I'll show you what I talk about here in a sec. <laughs> Shift change. try to get the wedge out. How about that uh, amateur face cut there? professional <laughs> I told him I said how about the amateur face cut <laughs> there you go all right so now we're gonna cut from the back side look at the water pouring out of it man that's crazy isn't it? now we're just gonna try to make this back cut here and hopefully we can make it right in line I've seen people like trace around a tree with a bar with the chain to kind of give them a reference point. Maybe we'll try that. I don't know because I'm obviously not doing very good on my uh, cut here. I mean, hey, it works. It ain't pretty, but it works, right? So now we'll, we'll cut this part off. 
Okay, this is the this is the real deal right here. I got the I got the drone up over here. And we got, we made sure we got the escape plan. Good so far. I hear it popping. Here it goes. Here it goes. Wow. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look how big that is. There's my arm. Well. Could have fooled me. Man, look at that. That's you see all the stuff? That was awesome. That was pretty cool, man. And it went straight. And it went straight, didn't it? Huh. You said you didn't know what you were doing. No, I don't. I <laughs> let's set it back up there and do it again. Yeah, let's go ahead. <laughs> Brandle. Hey, I'm out of shape. I'm fat. Hey. No, I'm you're not. In Florida. Dude, that's that's it. That's that'll wear you out. This ain't June work. This ain't. We should have. We like should. December work. <laughs> <laughs> hey, above Brandle's head, white circle. Subscribe. Around in his area, another video from Hamiltonville Farm. You guys take care. We'll catch you on the next one.